Thickness is uh, is getting close. Oh, we just reached the 250 meter point, so they're like two and a half football fields away yeah. from the space station. And one thing I can tell you that never never really um, seems real in The Sims is that right now that ship is looking very very big. I mean, it's it's the size of a small bus. Yeah, right? and it's so coming in pretty close. Too. It is so, definitely. So we so still have a few more. Uh, milestones to get through this morning. This is a little bit different than in September whenever they had the test flight, right? So there's not these checkouts and things like that, but the crew is still extremely busy uh, getting ready to use the arm to reach out and grab onto it. So Mike Hopkins is going to be doing it. Talk about kind of what he's going to be doing coming up in the next few minutes. Well, they operate as a pair, uh, Mike and Koichi. Mm -hmm. And so Mike is the person who's actually operating the arm, but then Koichi is backing him up, you know, always looking to see if he says he's going here with the arm, is that really where he's going, is that where he wants to go, that kind of thing. Yeah. Whereas Koichi is the lead for the Cygnus itself, all the commands to that vehicle in case they have to, um, for example, tell it to go away if they don't like what they see. Yeah. And so Mike is then backing Koichi up on all those things. Yeah. Um, both guys are so sharp at this stuff. It's going to be hopefully just what, like watching a ballet. It's great. <laughs> so they're going to be in the cupola workstation, which uh, kind of gives a pretty good view of everything around. There's also a backup robotic workstation in Destiny. They've got that powered up, ready to go in case they need it. Um, talk about the benefits of using the cupola, because you, you get to actually see the vehicle outside, and it, I, I'm assuming it kind of helps helps you do the actual grapple. Well, it, it, actually, it absolutely does. We could do everything technically by cameras, but it's still just, you know, the scene outside is painting a picture to you about where that thing is and where it's going. Yeah. And at the same time, the person who's grabbing it, we say, the person who's actually capturing, is looking at a screen right in front of them and focusing really more on that mm -hmm. than outside. So Mike will be looking at the screen. So the, the arm is going in to grab a grapple pin, but there's a camera right on top of the arm. Right. And that camera is looking at a target that's right on top of the real pin. And there's, there's actually the view that they're looking at on board, right? That, that's true. And so that looks like a, the little green, you know, rectangle there. Mm -hmm. um, that is where we expect Cygnus to be. And the little lights in back of it is the real Cygnus. That's the real thing. And so this is our way of, of seeing is what we've calculated here on the ground. Is that what we're actually seeing? Is the vehicle where it thinks it is? And is it where we want it to be? Which, of course, is good news. You want it inside the box. Inside the box is good. So 250 meters away. Uh, you know, you'll actually hear the crew um, talking, you know, as, as it, it's going to get bigger faster, and it'll s slowly actually fill that whole green outline there. So uh, we do want to update you here on NASA TV that uh, things are running, they're running ahead of schedule. We had an update to the timeline this morning. It's going to be at 5.13 a.m. Central Time or 6.13 a.m. Eastern Time. That is when we're expecting actual uh, grapple to take place a little bit later than we had planned. But, of course, this crew tends to work pretty efficiently. So um, we'll see how they uh, how they make progress so far. But uh, Yeah, I think we can give them these 11 minutes. Yeah, we can, <laughs> exactly. we can let those slide a little bit. So so we're continuing to take a look at the, the boards back behind us uh, as uh, Cygnus close, closes in. Uh, very stable. And we'll uh, continue to listen to the crew. Quarter monitoring Bravo. The aft white tracking light is within the uh, crew aboard corridor. And uh, due to the uh, night lighting, uh, we cannot uh, see the uh, the vehicle size, and so we cannot report uh, the difference between the uh, vehicle outline and the actual size. The aft white track light position is uh, offset about uh, half vehicle length forward, and. Uh, one third of vehicle width to the starboard with respect to the uh, strobe tracker. That's a circle tracker. And the strobe tracker position is about uh, one vehicle length to the starboard. Yeah, uh, Ricky, uh, correction. The strobe tracker position is. Uh, about one vehicle width to the board with respect to the uh, center of the crew aboard corridor center. Okay, copy all, uh, Koichi, thanks. Um, and we knew the lighting was going to be tough for you guys. And if uh, able, would you give us a, an RPOP HHL? Okay, we'll do.
This is Mission Control Houston. Again, we're holding at this 250 meter hold point. This is uh, planned. They will be giving a go no go coming up here pretty soon to um, enter in what's called the uh, keep out sphere. This is an imaginary 200 meter uh, circle around the International Space Station. It's just sort of a check for the teams, both here at NASA and at Orbital, to uh, just take a look at everything, make sure it's uh, good to proceed. Ricky, uh, you guys have seen what we are seeing on SSC-18 on the uh, RPOP display, is that right? Uh, negative, Koichi. Okay, uh, then uh, I'll just give you a report. Uh, the difference, uh, VV shows a point 0.4 at this time. And then the HHL raw shows 249.9R. HHL per delta T shows 249.9R. VV to HHL shows uh, 250.3. And as I reported, the difference of VV is 0.4. Okay, copy. Those are all good numbers, Koichi. And in the future, all we need from you is the difference, uh, the delta between the two. Um, now's a good time also to review steps three and four in 1.102 um, in the approach and retreat monitoring. Cygnus is going to hold here for a little less than 15 minutes, so it's a good time if you need a break. Okay, copy that. We will review uh, step uh, three and four. Thanks. So again, Cygnus is uh, holding at the 250 meter hold point right now. Technically, it's at 249, but we'll call that 250. It will stay here for the next few minutes. They will do a go-no-go -no -go to go inside the keep-out sphere, which uh, you're seeing on this uh, pretty cool little graphic here. Looks like something out of a Hollywood movie, but uh, that big giant circle that looks like a Death Star, that is actually the keep-out sphere of the International Space Station, which you see the ISS there in the center, Cygnus down there in the uh, approach box and uh, continuing to close in. Uh, you saw on the screen a minute ago, the flight director today is Brian Smith. The Capcom that you're going to hear talking to the crew is uh, Ricky Arnold, astronaut. They're just taking a uh, few minutes here, and they'll do this go-no-go no go poll coming up here shortly. Now, Katie, let's talk about what the crew is doing. They've got uh, just a few minutes of a break here, but uh, obviously they're still very busy, so what's the next thing for them? Well, Josh, they're, uh, they're looking probably really closely at exactly where they see the Cygnus on their monitors. And, and basically on the monitors, the green box draws a place where we've calculated that's where that ship should be. And, and something that's really important to us is to understand, um, is the ship where it thinks it should be? And is that where we want it to be? Okay. And so they're looking at that. It's just a little bit off center, but that's one of the things that it'll probably just come closer and closer and closer. And this is within the margins of error that we've calculated. But right now, people are looking at exactly, um, exactly where it is. And they're also just making sure that almost sort of the silly things are in place. Have they got all their procedures in the right place where they can see them at the right time? We probably won't need a bunch of these procedures. You know, what if when you try to grab it with the arm, you knock it? You know, yeah. what if when you grab it with the arm, the, the end effector doesn't grab it completely and stops short but still has a good hold on it? You know, all those kinds of what-if situations, we have procedures for those, you know, on a, on a card, probably making sure that they've got a couple copies of that card and that they each know exactly where they are. This is where the, the microgravity situation can really get you in trouble, where mm -hmm. something that was just Velcroed around you could get knocked away. So this is where they're <laughs> checking to make sure all their stuff is in place. And the space station is not exactly small, so you want to make sure you've got everything where you expect it to be. It's true. You know, with this, uh, something that I like to tell the folks who haven't done it yet is that something just really impressed me was basically how big this looked. And it's something you almost can't uh, simulate. There's a feeling I think that you just have inside when you look out, you look outside the window of the space station and you see something the size of a small school bus getting closer and closer and closer. I actually always think of that far side cartoon where it says objects in the mirror may be closer than they appear. Yeah. And so it, it's actually riveting. It's hard to, it's hard to look away from something that big getting closer and closer. And it's also beautiful and, and just neat to see it against the background of the earth and I'll bet you they're taking a zillion pictures. Well, and they're probably also thinking, oh, wow, we've, we've got to get busy over the next few days to actually unload all this cargo and, and get everything, you know, inside the station. I mean, there's 
close to 3,000 pounds of items coming up. Uh, so that's got to be kind of on their minds, too, kind of thinking about what's what's ahead over the next few days. You know, I think they are actually only thinking about their care packages. Okay. <laughs> <That's only laughs> No, I mean, folks are folks are actually real excited about the new supplies coming up because, you know, often, um, you know, basically we live to do the experiments up there. Yeah. And when new ones come up, you know, we've been waiting for them. It's not like we're sitting around with nothing to do. But there's, you know, we're always trying to fit one more thing in. And so yeah. new experiments up there um, is really exciting. I will tell you that fresh food up there is oh, really, yeah. really exciting. Oh, yeah. And I've heard there's a good bit of that on board. Yeah. There's also, you know, we talked about a lot. There's 23 different schools around the United States and, and Canada sending up experiments into this. Almost 9,000 students participating. I mean, that's, that's, that's cool stuff. That You know, this is a real flight with real science on board, and students are actually getting to participate in it, which is, which is amazing. And that, that is something that is so empowering to students when I've gone out and talked to them. The fact that they you know, are even personally following a mission and they feel like they are a little bit on board because they are. Yeah. And it's not that they're all going to grow up to be astronauts, but it's that they suddenly think that you know, doing something this cool and this amazing is something that they can do. They feel very empowered and it leads them to astounding other things. Yeah. We're about an hour away from uh, what should be the capture, 5.13 a.m. Central Time. 6.13 a.m. Central Time, as we mentioned, the uh, timeline had been updated a little bit right before we came on the air. So today's installation uh, should occur around 6.40 a.m. Central Time. That's when it should start. Of course, uh, those times could change just based on this morning's operations. But we're just uh, waiting. Uh, in the next four minutes or so, we should be departing this 250-meter uh, hold point and then uh, continuing on. And so that you see the sort of triangle down there, and you see the little the little dots leading up to something. Yeah. Um, so the the something is the Cygnus, and this is just a graphic showing the space station at the top, and it's almost like a corridor. That that cone there, that angular cone, makes a corridor, and and that is sort of the rule. That is where the Cygnus has to be. And yeah. if it goes outside that, it actually knows that it's outside, and it will abort itself. It'll back away. But yeah. of course, we can look at it, and we can abort it as well. Now the crew is looking at their monitors, and we saw them earlier with little boxes on them, and and basically there's a there's a, a box. Which you know, outside if the Cygnus goes outside that box, then the crew knows to abort the vehicle. But that's actually after the vehicle should have aborted itself, and we should have seen it and aborted it. So we've sort of we've always got kind of three levels of what if this happens. Katie mentioned something uh, important. The crew does have a panel that is with them there in the cupola. That's called the HCP, is the hardware control panel. It's basically the same thing that they use for the Japanese HTV. Uh, vehicle. It's a, it's a pretty simplified box. There's a button on there that tells the vehicle to abort or to hold. Um, you know, they tested this out back in September during the test flight of this vehicle, uh, but they've got it there with them in case in case they need to send a command themselves, actually, to Cygnus. And, and the, the command that we'd be most likely, well, I hate to say it, but the most likely to use is not so much abort. I mean, if, if it's really misbehaving, which we doubt. I mean, we've seen this vehicle once before, not this exact copy of the Cygnus, but the, the demo vehicle behaved very nicely. This vehicle's behaved very nicely, meaning when it says, okay, now I'm going to go, you know, this much faster, it goes exactly that much faster. When it says this is where I'm going to be, that's where it is. So we're we're feeling really good about this vehicle so far. But um, if we saw if the crew saw something they didn't like, you know, basically it's it's going too fast for them to catch it, or it just doesn't seem to be behaving correctly, they're going to push retreat. And what that's going to do is just take it one sort of little step back. Yeah. And so it would be at around uh, 30 feet. Yeah. And, and it would go back to about 90 feet. Yeah. So the flight director, Brian Smith, here inside Mission Control, uh, just completed a go-no-go no go poll of his team here. They are all go to depart this 250-meter uh, hold point coming up in about in a minute and a half. So we'll stand by and uh, watch. And now we can see those, those little lights, those are the actual, um, that's the actual Cygnus. And so those little four lights that you see are the lights on 
you know, the, the, the supply ship itself. The green outline is where we expect it to be. And I don't know if you can notice, but it's basically coming closer and closer and closer to the center of that box. And if you look down in the bottom right-hand corner, where you see sort of a diamond down there and yeah. a green dot in the middle, um, that is also another place that we can see. See where the, is the green dot in the middle?